correlation has been defined as the degree of association between two variables, or a measure of the strength of association among and between variables. Correlation is not defined as causation. At the risk of repeating myself, correlation is also known as association. Say, for example, we find that males are more likely than females to classify themselves as better than average drivers. That doesn't mean that being born male causes you to be a better driver. Sorry, guys. But it does mean that there is an association, a correlation, or a relationship between a person's sex and their perception of driving prowess. Another example might be that as number of years of driving experience increases, the number of accidents, tickets, etc. decreases. Driving experience then could be correlated or associated with safer driving. Or at least that's what auto insurance companies are banking on. This video will focus on the basic concepts of correlation and to a lesser degree regression. In particular, we will talk about Pearson's R correlation coefficient and the basics of the related concept of Pearson's R squared, the coefficient of determination. As we said earlier, correlation is a measure of the strength of association among and between variables. You first attempt to answer the question, is there any relationship between two or more variables? You can do this with nominal level variables, such as is a person's sex related to or associated with or correlated with pregnancy? Now being female, for example, would not cause you to become pregnant. The two variables are, however, strongly correlated. There is a relationship between them. However, you'll usually find correlation analysis when you are measuring two continuous level variables, such as amount of time running on a treadmill, measured as a continuous variable, and calories burned, also measured as a continuous variable. We use a correlation coefficient with continuous level variables to express the strength of that association. Is the connection or relationship a strong one, a weak one, or is it non-existent? Just knowing that a relationship exists between variables may not be enough. If you want to predict the value for one variable based upon the value of another variable, you will need to use regression analysis. With correlation, we are just looking for an association or a connection between random variables. While with regression, you are looking to see that if you change one variable, a fixed variable, you can predict a change in the other random variable. We use Pearson's R, also known as Pearson's Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, for correlation, and R squared for regression. Don't worry right now if you don't 100% understand the difference between the two. Just know that they exist as we move on. Assume that you have a hypothesis that says the number of hours a student studies for a final exam is positively related to the score they will receive on that exam. Two variables, both of which are continuous level variables, number of hours studying, and score on the exam. You can calculate a mean on both of these variables. To determine if a relationship exists between hours of study and exam score, you would calculate Pearson's R because it measures the linear relationship between two continuous level variables. They could be gathering interval or ratio level data. If you plotted out the data, there are four types of relationships that could exist. The first is the one you would probably expect for this example, a positive relationship. The more hours spent studying, the higher the score on the exam. There are a few perfect correlations, but many that are close, such as comparing the number of people who go to see a movie and resulting ticket sales. A negative relationship is the opposite. The more hours spent studying for an exam, the worse the score. Or, as a person's age increases, their agility level decreases. A curvilinear relationship might also exist. And for this example, let's change the variables to anxiety level and preparedness for a test. Those who are unprepared for a test may experience low anxiety levels when taking the test. Well, they know that they won't do well, so why sweat it? And those who are really prepared may also experience low anxiety levels. They have it down cold, so why worry? But it's those in the middle who might experience higher levels of anxiety. And of course, there could be no relationship between the two variables. When you finish calculating Pearson's R, you'll end up with values ranging from negative 1 to positive 1. The value describes the strength of association between variables. The closer the Pearson's R statistic is to 1, 
either negatively or positively, the stronger the relationship between the variables. And the positive and negative signs will tell you the direction of association between the variables. If it is a negative number, it's a negative relationship. For example, more hours studying could be negatively correlated with exam scores. The more you study, the worse you do. A positive number would mean that the more hours you study, the better you would do on the exam. But it's important to pay attention to both number 2 and 3 here. A Pearson's R of 0.15 would indicate a very weak positive correlation. While if you calculate a Pearson's R at negative 0.55, that means it's a stronger correlation, but in the negative direction. You may hear Pearson's R and R squared. What's the difference? Pearson's R is correlation, telling you the strength of association and whether it is a positive or negative correlation. R squared, then, is, very simply, taking the Pearson's R statistic and squaring it. It will always then be a positive number, ranging from 0 to 1.0. This tells you what percent of the independent variable, say hours of studying, explains what happens to the dependent variable, such as exam score. The closer R squared is to 1, the better the prediction. In other words, the better X explains what happens to Y. So R squared then is used for regression analysis. Processing time. Pearson's R is used to determine if a correlation exists for what type of variables. It is looking for a relationship between two continuous level variables, such as time spent on a treadmill and calories burned. Which of the following indicates the strongest relationship as measured by Pearson's R? 0.12, negative 0.68, 0 0.50, or negative 0.08? Well, now remember that Pearson's R ranges from a negative 1.0, which is a perfect negative correlation, to a positive 1.0, a perfect positive correlation. The closer the statistic is to 1, either on the negative side or on the positive side, the stronger the correlation or relationship. So of these, negative 0.68 represents the strongest correlation, and negative 0.08 represents the weakest. What is the difference between Pearson's R and R squared? Pearson's R is looking to determine if a relationship exists between two variables, and if so, what type of relationship, positive or negative. On the other hand, R squared is used for regression analysis. It is a Pearson's R statistic squared, used to estimate how much the independent variable explains what happened to the dependent variable. Or, put another way, what percentage of the variation in the score on the dependent variable can be explained by the independent variable? Finally, I'll leave you with an off-key song that my statistics professor made us sing in class. Association is not causation. It's often known as correlation. You should have a better understanding of Pearson's R and R squared, but in particular, of the relationship between two variables called correlation.